Hello all. Today we're going to talk about inheritance, which is that third bullet. And basically what it comes down to is we've learned about classes. We learned how to pop objects out. Now we have this kind of open door policy. Well, where can we go with this? Because we can do a lot of stuff with objects that right now we can do in a lot of different ways. Um, we actually have this a lot of creativity here, but with creativity, unfortunately, comes the ability to muck things up. So we're going to try to tell you in these next few videos uh, um, a couple different practices that have worked well over the years. And um, th and then from that, you guys will can play around a little bit and kind of create your own classes and um, pop out whatever you want and see what type of monster that you can create. So let's get started. Now, what is inheritance is the first question. And that is a good question. Um, well, let me think, let's think about it in terms of dogs and human beings. If you think of a dog and human being, we're both animals, right? In fact, we're both mammals. But then somewhere after that, we split off. <laughs> um, so the, 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 the questions, the next set of questions comes is, well, well, what do those groups have in common? Well, animals, well, we all have hearts, lungs, etc., right? These are the basics that make up an animal. Then if you think about mammals, well, we don't lay eggs, right? That makes us the <laughs> mammals. We, you know, we re reproduce the same way. Um, so that would make us, again, a like then but then you know you go to a human versus a dog well they have paws we have hands right so if you think about it what we can do is take our likenesses and kind of create a dog and a human being in the computer world but why start from scratch for which each which each one and if you've noticed you know from loops uh, why type out 10 lines of code when we can make a for loop do it instead uh, with functions, why create three different separate parts of a main routine when instead you can write a function and just keep calling that function up? So we don't we like to be efficient, and efficiency has a lot of benefits, meaning that you know they run your code faster, it doesn't take as much time to generate the code, just efficient across the board. So with an inheritance, what we do is we say, OK, well, let's start off with a class that's called animal. And then let's take stuff from that animal class and drag it down into the mammal class or the bird class or something like that. And once we're in the mammal class, we can take stuff from the mammal, mammal and the animal class and put them into the dog. And likewise, as a human being, I can take the mammal and the animal class and bring it into that stuff. Um, a lot of times they'll say it's an is a relationship. So a mammal is an animal. A human is a mammal. That sort of thing. If you think about it as in terms of a hierarchy, starting with animal at the top, going all the way down to human, that um, anything above us we can grab stuff from and use. So if we create this fictitious human being, I can create a heart from the animal class. I can grab specific things from the mammal class. But once we get down to the dog and the human class, now we're separated. We can't, the human can't grab from the dog class. Dog can't grab from the human class. Because if you think about it, again, in terms of hierarchy, we're on the same level. Um, so you can only go up to grab stuff. In Visual Studio, what we'll do is not actually create that human, dog, mammal, animal piece, but instead do a car creation. So you kind of, we can kind of see this in two parallel works. But before I go on, I originally meant to work along with you on this um, so I could kind of slow down. But what I saw is making a lot of just small mistakes to the point where it was making the overall video kind of hard to follow. So I kind of undid that and, re and just finished it and redid it. But um, the reason why I'm telling you this is because it's pretty normal for you to do that. I mean, you will first create these classes and you'll get tons of errors and all the, it'll be all this little knick-knacky stuff that when you add it all together, it'll seem like a lot. But it's, And it causes a big frustration, and that is normal. And I'm not telling you this to discourage you. I'm telling you this because every time a computer scientist or a computer engineer or software developer 
gets his hands on something new, we always kind of trip over our feet before we can kind of make it work 100%. That's just part of it. Um, but what you should notice, though, is that you probably aren't making hard to fix mistakes. Um, you just need to get through all of them. So start small and then work up. And this piece or this solution file is pretty small, as you will see. So we, I just created it with one button. Um, and that goes to a form. In fact, I'll just double click into it. That creates these separate lines, and I'm going to uncomment these lines out as we go. So there it is. We created a object from a class, and you, we've learned to do that already. So this shouldn't be so new. So to do that, we had to go into project, add class, and then make sure you click on class, and that's all it did. I renamed it car. So let's go into it. Now, if you think about cars and hierarchy, it's very simple. Um, it's the same as doing the human part. It, there's a, a hierarchy where there's all cars fall, or all automobiles fall under a certain level. And in this case, I skipped um, the make and went straight to the model. So I didn't do, we're doing, uh, if you look at the top, we're doing a CRV and a Camaro, um, and we skipped over Honda and Chevy. Um, but we could put that in the hierarchy as well. But I kind of just wanted, at first, just one simple level that these guys all, they're all connected to the same parent. And so if we go back, I created car, car one. So it's going to call the car class and then create a new car. And in here, what you're going to see here is car. And let's separate this out a little bit so you can tell that this is what's referred as the base. So you've made this before, but this is what we're going to build off of. So anybody can, the base is always just something that is not really connected to anything else. It's its own being. So a car can exist on its own. Um, but if we want to specify a specific car, then we're going to have to go, go one step further. Uh, I put in a private string because we're going to play a little bit with private and public. So I'm going to call four door. And actually, to be honest, I'm changing this because I didn't like the setting it a weird standard because I'm going to call it two door later. <laughs> um, and uh, we also have a public string color called peach because who doesn't want a peach car? <laughs> uh, and uh, then don't look at, well, actually, let's, we can look at all this. I take it back. So I'm going to put two constructors in here, one that passes nothing, one that passes a string. If we go back to form one, we don't pass anything. Um, so this is going to take into this account a constructor. Um, do we, again, from last videos, um, we don't have to create a constructor, but generally I like to just be, because I'll be in control. There's not going to be some generic one created for me. And um, then I'm going to do a message box show. If you are creating your class right now and this is got a big squiggly line underneath that is because when you create a class it will not bring in this windows forms that is a specific library and to be honest most c sharp um probably will not bring that in that's a specific type so go ahead and copy and paste it from this that, that's the easiest that way you're not going to mess it up autocomplete might do it for you though so anyways, getting back to it, we did a message box that show you created a car just to know that we're going through that constructor and um, door type to door. And what this is doing, it's calling on a method that's inside the class, not inside that form one. Uh, and it just says message box show you have a temp. Now, in this case, it's taking the two doors or the string literal and putting into temp and saying that you have a two door. So let's go ahead and hit start. And this should not be that 
crazy or that unpredictable. You've created a car. You have a two-door. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I made a second line. In fact, I can just comment out this line. And feel free to pause again if, if you want to look at any of this stuff. Um, I know it's probably a little hard to type with what I'm doing. But the car, car two, new car, is now passing an argument in there, which means it's going to just take advantage of the second overloaded uh, constructor. So it's going to skip over car and go into this one. And as you notice here, it's not going to say you have created a car, but it's going to tell us that we have created a four-door car. So let's go ahead and hit it. You have a four-door. Now, for uniformity's sake, we probably should do the message box show you've created a car. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Um, but what we also should use, uh, look at here, is that we pass in a moonroof. So a moonroof would be a special function, or excuse me, in this in this case, I'm talking about cars, it would be a, um, a special, maybe an add-on to the car that you'd pay more for, but w would allow us to uh, create an attribute or a property for, from that car uh, that we could look up and list later on. And, that, and so that's basically the base class again um, that is going to be derived from. Now what we're going to do is create three different files, three different classes. So I'm going to do a Junker, a Camaro, and a CRV. So two of them proprietary, the third one is all ours. So we get the Junker. Um, and if you look at these, and I'm going to do these one at a time, I'm going to first uh, say that I have a door type in here. And it doesn't like that because it's not used. But remember, going back to the car, um, we can play with this a little bit. So I put a private string in there. And that's basically to show that this is a full-on class. I also did a message box show, which means I'm going to have to bring this windows.form again. And now it's saying you've created a CRV. Now, the first thing I'll say is if you, you can create this the good old standard way. And if I go back to forms one and do a CRV car. And actually, I'm going to going to call it car three, might as well call this car four then, and then say equal to new CRV. And then make sure you don't pass anything here because we only have one constructor and there's nothing in it. Or, or no, nothing is passed into it. So when I do this and hit start, create a car, it says you create a new CRV and it's going to not ignore the car, the base, but what we want to do is actually take these two lines out, and this is all you have to do in order to for inheritance. Colon car right there at the class level. So now when it comes in here, and it's going to essentially say look back at the car class and I'm going to call this a derived class because it's going to be derived from car so it can take stuff from car and bring it in here so if I were to say start and create a car you have created a car you have a two-door so it's calling that method that's in car and then it comes into our specific class and says you've created a CRV, a two-door CRV. Now, going back to this, why did it pick two-door? Because we didn't have anything in the constructor. So it uses this constructor and this constructor. It actually plays both of them. Now, can I put more stuff in here? I certainly can. But let's keep it simple for now. Okay. Now let's do a Sue Camaro. And a Camaro, I just what I wanted to show is you could do more of these. Um, so pretty simple. 
class Camaro. I really just copied this guy over <laughs> and then replaced the word uh, CRV with Camaro. That's all that I did. So it's still got to have the cone car. So that means it's going to be derived so we can create it. And then we can um, look back to the car to get more information. And it is also a drive class. A lot of times I'll call this the parent class because it can spawn off a couple kids and then they can have spawn off a couple kids. And so we kind of think of it in that hierarchy sense again as kind of parents, children, and then if you want to go further, grand, grandpa <laughs> or grandparents, uh, parents, children. But uh, the lower one or the derived class, I usually call child. The above class, I usually call parent. Okay, so now let's get rid of that one and go to our junker. And with, if you look at this, we are going to not just create a junker. We're going to create the junker LT series here. So that's going to be a super sweet model. Again, this is a straightforward constructor that I copied from CRV into Camaro and to Junker, replace CRV um, with Junker here. That's it. Pretty boring. I want to alert you to this. I put it different as opposed to derived. Sometimes they say that whenever you use inheritance that you're extending the original class. You're extending the car class into the Junker class because you're taking that information from the car class and, and letting it apply to the Junker. That's kind of cool. But we didn't say we wanted a Junker. We wanted the Junker LT. So now let's go to the Junker LT. It references or it says to look at the Junker. And when you go into the Junker, it's going to say look at the car. So you can string these things together to create an infinite uh, inheritance string if you would like to. Dangerous. You probably don't want to go too deep, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you need to. And then here we just have another message box that says you've created the most excellent because there's no T in excellent. <laughs> it's only in the LT. There's so much T in the LT, it, it needs no excellent T. Uh, all right. So anyways, if we, if we run this, think about what it's going to do. It's going to say Junker LT. So it's going to look up Junker LT. And before it does anything, it says, okay, go look at Junker. All right, go on to Junker. Okay, before you do anything, look at car. All right, look at, look at car. Car, well, what did it pass in? Uh, it passed in nothing. So I am going to use this constructor as opposed to this lower constructor. I'm going to stay right here. Okay, so I'm going to say you've created a car. I'm going to run the door type 2. So it's going to also say you have a two-door being passed in. And then... Um, when it's done, then it says, oh, yeah, well, I've been called by Junker, so now i got to go back to Junker. Then it's going to say, message box show, you've created a Junker. And it says, well, I'm done. Okay, I don't have to do anything. Go back to Junker LT and finish up. You've created the most excellent Junker out there. Um, so let's take a look and see if it does exactly how I predicted. You've created a car. You have a two-door. You've created a Junker. And you've created the, the other most junk, excellent junker. <laughs> Again, you know, when you have a junker, you don't need good grammar anymore. So <laughs> it's important that you that you do that. If you look at all that, then we kind of know what we can do and we can build these out. And why is this important? Well, first of all, we can build complex objects and we don't have to start from scratch for each one. You know, this is literally a class with three lines of code within. The other nice thing is, you know, if I'm working on a team of 10, and that is not odd in programming, I can work on the Junker class while somebody else works on the CRV class. And maybe there's a CRV special model, you know, and they can do that. And all that I have to know is, okay, well, what is my parent class? Oh, Junker? Okay, cool. I don't even have to really know that Junker has another parent class of cars because I never actually list the base class in here. And it makes things a lot simpler because you know, well, okay, what do I have to pass in? What do I have to bring back? That's all you. That's really all that you have to tell somebody when they're making the class. Or excuse me, what's my parent class? What is my 
um, input or what parameters are being passed into me and then am I supposed to spit anything out you're done it keeps it nice and simple generally what I say is um, just practice it get simple stupid things like this to work first and then start putting in the cooler stuff because once you feel comfortable getting this stuff to work then it really gets fun and then come back for another great episode. The next one I think you probably should look at is polymorphism that builds off of inheritance.